I'm going to review everything you need to know about orthognathic jaw surgery, including recovery time, complications, cost of surgery, and much more. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share my experience with this surgery. Yes, I've got it done and whether I would do it all over again. Corrective jaw surgery, also known as orthognathic surgery, fixes the misalignment of your jaw bones. This helps realign teeth for people that have a severe overbite or a severe underbite, and it can really help improve your speech and your smile. It's typically done by an oral surgeon under general anesthesia in a hospital setting, and most people don't know that it takes a team of dentists and specialists to get the job done right. So who are the ideal candidates for this type of jaw surgery? Well, this type of surgery is typically done for patients that have severe bite problems that can not be corrected with braces alone. It can help with your bite if you have difficulty chewing food. It helps correct facial imbalances such as a small chin, underbite, overbite, or even a crossbite. It can help with breathing problems due to sleep apnea, and the list goes on and on. And for me personally, jaw surgery helped stabilize my bite and made a life-changing difference in my speech, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about the two main reasons why people get jaw surgery. Correcting a severe underbite is one popular reason why people get jaw surgery. And you can do this in two ways. One is to move your upper jaw forward and the other way is to move your lower jaw back. Both options are going to give you better symmetry and alignment of your face and sometimes they have to do a by jaw or double jaw surgery in order to get the best results. Overbites are corrected by moving the lower jaw forward or moving the upper jaw backward. Remember that changing the position of your jaw can have a huge impact on your overall facial appearance as well as how your body functions. For example, if you move your upper jaw forward, it can change the appearance of your nose. And if you move your lower jaw backwards, it can limit your airway. So it's important that your oral surgeon evaluate all of these options in order to put you in the most stable condition. So now I want to talk to you about each step of the jaw surgery process. Before the surgery, you're going to be put in braces and the orthodontist is going to line your teeth in a way that makes sense for the oral surgeon before he repositions your jaw. After this is done, you're going to schedule an appointment with your oral surgeon typically in a hospital setting under general anesthesia, and the oral surgeon is basically gonna make cuts in your jaw that allow them to freely reposition the jaw in the orientation that makes the most sense. They then place plates and screws to secure the jaw into position, and these implants will integrate with your body, they are permanent, and they will keep your jaw stable. And sometimes a surgeon may recommend wiring your teeth together using the braces that you have on in order to secure it kind of like a cast, which will make the recovery process a little bit more predictable. Once this is done, you're gonna heal and the orthodontist is gonna take over to make any other repositioning that they need to do with your teeth in order to give you the best smile possible. Okay, so what about the recovery process? Typically, we're gonna recommend eating a soft food diet, avoiding strenuous activity, avoiding tobacco, and obviously having excellent oral hygiene at home. Complete healing can take anywhere between 12 weeks or more, depending on how invasive the surgery was. Now after the surgery you will definitely experience some pain and swelling, difficulty eating due to a bite change, and you're also going to have to get adjusted to a new facial appearance. Remember that you just had jaw surgery and there's a lot of swelling and sometimes it can be a shock to look in the mirror and see this basically really swollen face. But don't be alarmed, the swelling will subside over time and eventually it's going to look much much better. For me personally it took about a year before I was really comfortable looking at myself in the mirror and communicating in a different way. So what are the complications and risks associated with this type of jaw surgery? Although it is a safe procedure, there are some risks that we have to mention. These include infection, blood loss, nerve injury, jaw fracture, relapse of the jaw position, problems with your bite, and temporomandibular joint pain. For me personally, I did lose some nerve sensation on my upper palate, and this is a permanent result of the surgery. Um, it's something that I was waiting to get full sensation back, but it never really happened, and my surgery was done around 10 years ago. Is it a life-changing problem? No, not really. But basically, if I'm eating something too hot or too cold, I don't have that sensation on my upper palate, which can be a problem, especially if I'm eating something too hot because it can burn me and I may not know that it's burning me. So that is something to consider. So how much does jaw surgery cost? 
cost is always a difficult question to answer, but the surgery costs can range anywhere between twenty to forty thousand dollars. However, if you have really good medical insurance and there's a reason other than aesthetics to do the jaw surgery, for example, if you're having problems breathing and you want to move your lower jaw forward, or if you're having problems with your speech, uh, or you have speech impediment or things like that, then your insurance can cover a lot of the cost. The best thing to do is always get a consultation, go check with your medical insurance company and see what the coverage is. And finally, I just wanna share my experience with jaw surgery, why I got it done and whether I would do it again. So I suffered with a pretty severe underbite when I was younger. My jaw was protruded forward and although it didn't really bother me in terms of the aesthetics and how I looked, it was affecting my speech. When I was younger, they put me in braces and they did something called the camouflage technique where they moved my lower front teeth forward in order to make it look like my bite and my smile was natural, but it really did affect the way I was communicating. I felt like I was trapped almost, like I couldn't say the words that I wanted to say. So because of that, because of an unstable bite where I was biting only on one tooth towards the back, we made the decision to get the jaw surgery done. Now in my particular surgery, they moved my upper jaw forward instead of moving my lower jaw back. The reason they did that is because if you move the lower jaw back, it can constrict the airway and also you have to consider that if you move your lower jaw back, it can give you more feminine features. So they decided to move my upper jaw forward. And I'm not really gonna lie to you guys, the surgery was really difficult for me. It took me a lot longer than I expected to heal. Immediately after the surgery, I was incredibly swollen and I looked like a pumpkin for a couple of months after the surgery was completed. My teeth felt like wooden chips and I couldn't really bite into anything. So when they recommend a soft food diet, that's no joke. After a surgery, it's really hard to chew and eat things. And a lot of people that I know that have gotten the surgery done Typically, they lose a lot of weight because it's hard to eat everyday items. Now, this isn't the case for everyone. I also know people that got the surgery done and within a month, they looked completely normal and they healed really quickly. But for my case, it was different. It was kind of jarring for me to see someone in the mirror that I didn't recognize. And that takes time for you to mentally process and for you to be comfortable in your own skin. So you have to know that if you're undergoing the surgery, this is a big change in your life and you may not be immediately satisfied with the results or how you look. So that is something to consider. Also, like I said before, I did have some nerve damage and I never really fully regained that nerve functionality in my upper palate. For me, after I got my bite really stable, I felt like I wasn't trapped anymore and I could communicate freely. It's kind of a hard thing to describe, but I did feel like I was able to speak more clearly and that was really important to me. So would I do it again? I would. But it's really important for any of you guys out there that are considering getting the surgery done to not just believe that it's gonna be perfectly fine and that the process is easy and that all of a sudden you're gonna have amazing results. There are complications to the surgery. There may be some nerve damage. That's a true possibility, just like I had. You are gonna to have to get used to a different facial appearance. Some people that have amazing results and they love the way they look after, some people unfortunately don't and they have to cope with that. So I guess what I'm saying is don't take this decision lightly. It's a big decision, it's a life-changing decision, and you really have to evaluate the pros and cons of getting the surgery done. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope this helps someone in need. And remember that if you're searching for an excellent dentist, make sure to check out the website that me and my friend made. It's on smileinfluencers.com slash the dentist locator. I'll drop a link down below. Thank you and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.